Thank you, everybody, for coming today. We have Thomas who will tell us about top affiliation for a conduct. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to be here. Um, so first, just like in the movie theater, I would like to start with a little bit of advertisement. So the Kylavik workshop in selective topology will happen this year, uh, the week of June 24th to 28th, near Seattle, in Washington. Uh, the topic is recent developments in gramophyton theory. Uh, and so if you are a graduate student or if you know graduate students who uh, would be interested in that, you can apply uh, through the website until April 14th. So please spread the words. Uh, okay, so now I can start my talk. So the topic of the talk is to try to uh, understand how, how two very different structures in the three manifolds, namely foliations and contact structures, interact. So I think we all know that the sufficiently smooth uh, co-oriented foliation with three manifold, so let's say M is a closed oriented three manifold foliation. If you think about it as an integrable clean field, one form, it looks like one form alpha satisfying alpha which the alpha is zero. The foliation is tangent to the kernel of alpha. This is a terrible structure. On the other side of the picture have contact structures, which can be defined through a one form. But this time, alpha, which the alpha is always non zero. So let's say I look at positive contact structures. This is always positive uh, with respect to the orientation. And this is completely non integral, maximally non integral. Um, the goal of this talk is sort of like try to convince you that these two structures, even though they are very far apart, are maybe two aspects of the same theory. Uh, and that's not a completely new idea. There's been a lot of work uh, in this direction, but now I really want to understand how to go back and forth between the two sides. Um, so the foliation side is maybe quite rigid because of the integrability condition. It is hard to deform the foliation. However, contact structures are defined through an open condition in the C1 topology, so it's much easier to wiggle the contact structure. However, thanks to great stability, if you modify the contact structure a bit, it's sort of still the same up to azotopy. So it's more flexible, but it's also stable. And hopefully, if you can merge the two sides of the picture, we get uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things become possible. So that's sort of what I want to advertise. Thank you. So the first part of my talk is essentially essentially going to review a little bit what is known, uh, and especially on how to go from foliations to contact structures. And I would like to present some kind of dictionary between the two worlds, and lots of adjectives you can put in foliations, rib less, taut, and et cetera, and also adjectives on contact structures, over twisted or tight, universally tight, et cetera, and I sort of want to make a parallel between these adjectives. So maybe the beginning of the story is a, a theorem of a Galeas, Rib, and Thurston. Um, 98, which is the following. If you start with a foliation F with some regularity C2 foliation, which is different from the S2 foliation and S1 with S2. For some reason in 3D topology, this 
manifold is always uh, a little bit special. Then, uh, F can be approximated. Or rather, the tangent plane field to F can be approximated by positive or negative contact structures. And moreover, if F is taught, which I define, then let's say these are C plus minus approximations, then C plus minus are uh, universally tapped. That is also maybe term that I should define, but probably no rules. Okay, so from a correlation, we can perturb this integrability condition in something that is low and integrated. So that's sort of the first bridge. So if you recall, taught, taught foliation, there is a billion different uh, equivalent definitions. Uh, a common one is to say that through any point P in M, there exists a closed loop, gamma, transverse to TF. Maybe another way that is a bit better from the symplectic point of view, there exists omega, a closed to form, which is positive when restricted on the leaves. Okay. And tight. Gonna give you the standard non definition, it means not over twisted. And over twisted means that there exists an embedded over twisted disk. So, embedded disk, so that the contact structure is tangent to the boundary of the disk and the point in there, and the characteristic foliation looks like it's twisted like that. So that's an over twisted disk. So over twisted contact structures are flexible. They obey some H principle. Um, and similarly, uh, well, there is a maybe a correct equivalent to over twisted should be relation with the rib component. We're going to say a bit more about that later. But on both sides of the picture, there is some flexibility and rigidity. And I kind of want to try to match the different degrees of rigidity on both sides. Okay. So, are there any questions so far? Okay. So, this result of Elia Lubick and Thurston has been generalized. In particular, the situ assumption has been removed. And so now, probably the work of there's the Babin, and so as is and Forberts, this holds for what's called the C0 foliation. <laughs> so the C0 foliation <laughs> is the double degree <laughs> equation. So that the leaves are C1 immersed. Maybe say it's in 3D immersed in per. Uh, and so each leaf has a tangent plane field, and I want all these tangent plane fields to form a continuous uh, plane field plus tangent continuous plane field. Okay. So we have regularity on the leaves, but no regularity in the transverse direction. 
And actually, a theorem of uh, Caligari says that if you start with any topological foliation on a three manifold, you can isotope it to a C0 foliation like that. So you can gain regularity twice, but no transversal. The lack of transversal regularity is sort of crucial. And the world of C0 foliation is strictly more general than the word of C1, C2 foliation, et cetera. So here, the, somehow, the regularity is, uh, is going to be crucial. For what I say later. OK. So that's one possible generalization. Another generalization is if we modify the adjective. So if now I suppose that F is rebless, so rebless means no ray component. Um, I'm going to sketch component or component. So imagine that this is a torus. And formation should look like that. So so we have a solid torus, which is a leaf, and inside of the solid torus, um, so the boundary of the solid torus is a leaf, and inside of it, all the leaves are planes, and they look like that. Um, so if it's ribless, it has no rib components. Then the approximations are also contact approximations are also universally tight. Here, universally means that it's tight when you go up to the universal cover. So the conclusion is the same for ribless, and this is due to several people. I mean, it's due to for the C2 case and bounding for the C0 case. Uh, okay, so that's another generalization. Um, maybe I'm just going to say things and not write them, but it is known by Igniter that. Every contact structure on the three manifold, co oriented, say, is the deformation of the smooth foliations. Um, however, in the entire construction, the foliation has rib components by construction. Okay. You take an open book decomposition and modify the binding by adding rib components. Uh, so, this is sort of a little bit unfortunate because we get a foliation from the contact structure, but it's very flexible. It has rib components. Um, I'm not interested in that. Uh, and also, on, of course, on S3, there are tight contact structures with no uh, ribless foliations. So to go from contact structures to foliations, we have to be a little more precise. It's not maybe one contact structure is not enough. Um, OK. Um, I should also mention the work of Honak and Zematic about uh, the extent of tight foliations and manifold boundary, which is of a different flavor than that. Here, I'm really working for closed manifolds. Um, and maybe I want to spend a little bit of time on just something I really like. Thomas, can, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, so is the, the result of calling and, and Jonathan, is it also in the Z0 category? Uh, yeah, so Colin did for C2 and then Jonathan did it for C0. But Jonathan also showed that any sufficiently, you know, any approximation of a ribless foliation is universally tight. Uh, but I don't think we know if any approximation of a C0 ribless foliation is universally tight. There is at least one uh, approximation that is in the C0 case. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, but so the theorem I'm going to talk about now is for C2 foliation. Uh, maybe it also holds for C0 foliation, but it's not known. Uh, and it's very uh -huh. interesting to me as a commenter. Um, so, so the Jonathan Zong, he showed that if you have a, a C2 foliation, I have to write a lot of words with no polynomial environment transverse measure, 
And since this is very long and hard to write, I'm gonna call this, I, mean, I just made up a word and I'm gonna call that hypertot. This condition implies toughness, but it's even more than that. Uh, then he showed that uh, there exists contact approximation, x plus minus, such that the rate vector field r plus minus for some contact forms are transverse to. So a very good feature of tight foliations is that any transverse loop is non-contractible. And therefore, these contact structures are hypertight. So hypertight, hypertight. I think it's I like this. So, um, another way to say that, and so I'm really trying to try to make this terminology standard now because I like it. Uh, this is the same as having a close to form, but this time it's exact, such that um, omega restricted on f is positive. So not only we have a close to form, but this close to form is exact. And we have some kind of like coherent usual leaf wide with this structure information. But what I really like about this theorem and in particular the proof is that Jonathan also constructs something uh, more, which he doesn't write it, but it's true. There exist um, uh, alpha minus and alpha plus contact forms of these contact structures such that the following form, lambda, and this is a one for an R cross M, is dual. Meaning that D lambda is a symplectic form, and because of the shape, at infinity looks like a subductization. Um, so from such a hypertot foliation, you get a dual structure on the product. This real structure is very non nasty because of the topology of the three manifold. Uh, so I've been interested in this kind of weird object, uh, usual non nasty manifolds, and that's maybe the most general construction in dimension three that you can hope for. And notice that the dual form has a very specific shape. In particular, the skeleton of such a dual manifold is some code dimension one uh, copy of the original three manifold, and it really looks like you're trying to glue two subtractizations but the wrong way. Um, okay, so I think that's a very cool result. And actually, this was originally my motivation was trying to, to go from the little structure to the foliation, but it turns out that it's possible to do something much more general. Okay. Thomas? Yeah. Presumably, if you take an anosa flow, the stable yes. and unstable foliation satisfy this hypertotness condition? Or? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, as Addison said, in the special case, of another foliation, so foliations coming from the weak stable or weak and stable foliations of an another flow, then you do have some hypertot foliation and you, you get such a dual structure. So the this this pair of plus and alpha minus is usually called a dual pair. For another flow, this dual pair satisfies even better properties and it's possible to match exactly another flows and this special dual pairs that I called another of dual pairs. Uh, if you want to know more about that, then I gave a talk last year about it. I think the video is online, so feel free to take a look at it. Uh, so now I want to summarize this dictionary. Uh, following way, so uh, affiliations and here I have not only contact structures but I have contact pairs. I want to remember the positive and the negative approximation because of Etnaris theorem that every contact structure is a deformation of some smooth foliation with weak components. One contact structure is not enough. However, if I remember x plus and x minus, maybe there is some hope to get the foliation that is sort of stuck between them. 
So here I'm going to look at contact pairs. Contact pairs is just a pair of contact structures. One is negative and one is positive. Okay. So I can start with any C0 foliation and by Elias with Thurston and then generalize by Bogan because that's pretty progress, I get uh, a positive contact pair. The positivity means that because they come from a small approximation of a foliation, these two contact structures can touch, they can coincide, but they will coincide with the same orientation and opposite co-orientations, not the other way. Another way to say it is that there is some noir vanishing vector field transverse to both. It's a positive transverse to, to both. Okay. So now then we have the Ripley's case, and here we have a still a positive universally tight contact pair. Um, for top, we have actually something a bit better, and that's a definition due to Kola and Firmo, making that strongly tight. And really strongly tight, I don't, I don't really add this terminology, but you take this definition of tautness and you put it on a contact pair. Uh, so maybe we can say that there is some omega closed to form, which is positive on both xc plus and xc minus. Okay. Then we have hyperplot. Uh, at least two. Thomas? Yeah. Is strongly tight the same thing as saying uh, universally tight plus universal covers R3 or something like that? Mm, I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, at least that's how Elias Thurston defined this. I think they have a slightly different definition. That's why I don't like this terminology because I think there are, there's conflicting terminology for strongly tight. Okay. For me, strongly tight means to pick the definition of tot and you just apply it to both contact structures. You can also say that to every point, there is a closed loop that is positively transverse to both. That's an equivalent way of saying it. But it's a bit like a ad hoc definition. Um, okay, so hypertop, we get a dual pair. And so a dual pair is strongly tight, which is positive and etc. So here we, we go from less rigid to more rigid. And well, as Nagusin said, we also have most rigid ones, which are kind of foliations. And that gets something that I called a nose of mutual pairs. Pair. That means that both alpha minus alpha plus and minus alpha minus alpha plus or dual. Okay. And so here it's actually possible to go back and to show some homotopy equivalence between the nozzle flows and this type of structures. Um, and well, all the other arrows are going that way from foliations to contact structures. So the point of this talk is to find a way to go from the contact pairs to the foliations. Go from right color to left color. Okay, are there maybe any questions so far? Okay, so I mean, all this somehow is sort of part of the story is quite old now, and part of the story is a bit more recent, but. Um, 
Okay, now I'm going to start saying new things. Um, so maybe I'm going to, so this is a constructing foliations. Oh, So the, the setup is going to be as follows. So I still have my those oriented for manifold, and now I have a pair C minus P plus, which is a positive pair. The terminology positive pair is also unfortunate because well, C plus is a positive contact structure, C minus is a negative contact structure, but the pair is positive. So strange. Um, and so I, I, I can fix. Uh, a vector field Z, which is nowhere vanishing, uh, which is transverse to both. Okay. And now I'm also going to assume uh, either C minus is transverse to C plus everywhere. Or one of them, at, at least one of them, is tight. So I'll try to explain later why I need to put these conditions. We do those very mild conditions, but, uh, in the sense that, well, transverse contact structures. Are interesting because the vector field spanned by the intersection is what is called a projectively a nozzle flow, which is sort of a generalization of a nozzle flow. And okay, if you don't have this transversality everywhere, then okay, you just have to assume that one of them is tight. If we want to construct tight foliations, then the approximations of tight foliations are automatically tight, so it's not a very big deal. And why would we care about pairs of over twisted contact structures? Um, okay. Can I have examples where this condition does not Sorry? Are there examples where this condition, like neither of these options hold? Not really. Um, wait. Like when the two, I mean, yeah, you can let's probably. Let's say out to or something. Like if you have two over twisted. So, I mean, first of all, if they are not in the same homotopy class, then there is no chance that they will be put in a positive uh, way. Uh, then, yeah, you can probably. If you start with a very crappy rib foliation and you look at approximations, you'll probably get two over twisted things. Um, but that's sort of like the non interesting case. Uh, if you want to get at least something ribless out of contact structures, I think you need, I mean, it's reasonable to assume that at least one is tight. Maybe I want to also assume that both of them are tight. That's sort of like a more reasonable setup. Yeah. Um, something I can. Maybe just saying passing, which is that if one of them is over twisted, and if they are in the same homotopy class, then it's not too hard to modify, say, the, the, the over twisted one to put them in a positive position. There is some kind of like flexibility result like that, but really, I'm interested in case of both of them. Tight. That's sort of bug uh, needed for the theorem we're going to state now, which is still in preparation. But I would say maybe 95% ready, hopefully. Uh, I've given, given this talk several times, and th this number has been increasing strictly. So, well, I'm good. Good <laughs> yes, uh, I hope it's still going to continue to increase. So, the theorem is that from this setup, there exists a foliation, a seizure foliation, um, such that. Z is still transverse to F to T. Um, okay, I'm studying it in a rather imprecise way. I can say more about what this foliation looks like, but maybe I'll I'll say that maybe later in my talk. Um, okay, and so in particular, there are some corollaries, which is that if C minus T plus is strongly tight, then this F is stopped. Uh, for instance, if it's strongly tight, uh, 
Uh, one equivalent definition of this is that there is a volume preserving uh, vector field transverse to both. I pick this one to be Z. The Felician I get is still transverse to this volume preserving vector field. Therefore, it's taught by just going back and forth between the all the equivalent definitions. So that may be corollary one. And corollary two is that if um, C minus C plus are the kernels of a legal pair. Then there exists F hydrotons. Um, it's a less direct corollary. There is little competition involved. But essentially, if you have such a dual pair, you can get the foliation from this theorem. And then maybe you have to modify alpha minus and alpha plus. You want to rescale them, multiply alpha plus by some positive function, divide alpha minus by the same function to change the rate vector fields. And my claim is that you can make the rate vector fields transverse to, to F. Another way to say that is D alpha plus is going to be positive on F, which implies hypertonics. Okay. And in particular, I mean, the transversality condition to Z implies that TF is homotopic to C plus and C minus as plane fields, but maybe. Uh, one way to think about it is, it's not completely true, but if this is C plus and C minus, then TF is sort of somewhere here. It's not absolutely true, and maybe I'll say something about that. It's close to being between them. It's not exactly between them. Okay, there may be other questions. Okay, so before getting proof of this theorem, I want to give a relatively straightforward application of it to so uh, so here is a question. I start with the Todd foliation on the three manifold, a C0 Todd foliation, arbitrary, and I take a closed, well, I take a knot transverse to the foliation. So it's F dot on M3, K on M and dot. Could be a link, but I'm just going to say a dot, uh, which is transverse for TF. What three topologies, topologies love to do is to do surgeries, to get new interesting manifolds. So we might form MKS. Um, let's say this dot is print. So it comes with a tubular neighborhood with coordinates on the tubular neighborhood. And MKS, this is the S slope surgery on K. And the question is does there exist, does F survive the surgery? Does there exist some F prime dot on MKS with K transverse to? So if you just do things naively, you, know, you have a transverse knot and you do the surgery, but now F is the surgery locus has the wrong meridional slope. What used to be meridian is now not the meridian at all. If you try to fill F, you get some singularity along K. It's not good. So pretty unclear how to do that on the foliation. However, if you think of foliations and contact structures, it becomes much easier because there is a well-defined notion of contact surgery. And so yeah, the theorem is as follows. Um, I, okay, I also have to assume that F is not 
S2 for H2, S4 for S2, as usual. Um, the theorem is that there exists some S0, uh, which depends on, on K and on F and on M, everything, such that for every S with the S bigger than S0, uh, there exists F prime dot on MKS with K prime. So K prime is the image of the null to the surgery is transverse to uh, F prime. And okay, the slope being large means that the meridian is sent to a curve that is almost parallel to the meridian. So I'm sort of like modifying a little bit the boundary slope of the foliation. That's sort of the idea. Okay. And I think you can try to fit the proof of this board. Okay, so third step. We apply in the algebraic custom to get sigma x plus, which is a strongly tight pair. Steps two. In a tubular neighborhood of the knot, we will modify x plus and x minus to make them standard. So this neighborhood looks like D2 cross S1. And now C plus, let's say C minus prime and C plus prime uh, of the form uh, kernel of uh, Plus minus dt plus s squared e theta. So r theta are the power coordinates on, on d2 and t is the, the coordinate on s1. Okay. This this the step two is fairly easy. I mean you can make one of them standard and the other one is not standard, but it's you know it's in the tubal neighborhood, it's tied and it's transverse to a vector field that is parallel to the knot and you can either write down something explicitly, or you can use some theorem due to the Ashberg and classification of tight contact structure, and or maybe use uh, some foliation by uh, convex surfaces and use Giro's theorem. Something fairly standard. So massage them to be standard in the neighborhood of the knot. Okay. And now I'm going to do the following thing. So now I have to maybe show a little dance. Um, so this is the tubular neighborhood, and on the outside, the contact structures look like that. And if I go towards the center, they flatten until they are flat at zero. Okay. Now I'm going to remove a smaller solid torus in this bigger solid torus. And when I approach the center, I will push C minus a little bit. So it will do that. And when I go, I push C minus so that it rotates faster than it used to rotate. And it will match C plus on a smaller solid torus. That can be done by you know modifying the R squared function by some other function. You can write down something explicitly. And on the smaller torus, C minus and C plus have the same slope. And I can choose the slope to be S, provided that S is large enough. Okay. So maybe I can write. So, you know, I can move xc minus to get a positive slope, xc plus to get a negative slope, uh, so that slopes of c minus and xc plus coincide on the boundary of a disk of radius r cross s1. So, on a small disk. Okay, now I forget about what's inside this. Smaller solid torus. I just remove it and I do a contact cut. So a contact cut is a way to collapse this inside torus and to collapse it in a way that the curves with the corresponding slopes become new meridians. So maybe a slightly fancier way of doing it is you cross this by S1, 
you have an S1 action that is trivial on the S1 co coordinate and that is a rotation along with the, the slope corresponding to the slope of the two contact structures, and then you do some quotient. So that, but that's a well known operation. It's a way to do a contact surgery on C plus and C minus at the same time. So now we get MKS with C minus tilde, C plus tilde. A new contact there. It's still positive and it's still going to be strongly tight. Um, and that's not too hard to check. We only, it's a local modification. We only modify things in the neighborhood of the knot. So it's not too hard to keep track of this kind of properties. Okay, and step five, I'm not going to write it, but uh, apply the theorem above to get the foliation. Okay, so we started with foliation, we approximated by contact structures, we played with the contact structures doing the standard things, and we used the theorem above to get the foliation. So that illustrates two things. We can use the flexibility of contact structures to put them in step positions and etc. do the surgery operation, and also this is a local thing, it's a local construction. Um, I don't know how to prove this theorem without using contact structures, and it would probably be a very global and painful thing to do. Uh, usually, something <laughs> like that 3D topologies, they would use things like searched hierarchies or branched surfaces and do very tricky combinatorial things and etc. And it's very global, whereas this is just concentrated in a tubular neighborhood of the knot or the link if you want to. Can you say somewhere about S0? Like, uh, you have some grid mode? No, I have no control on S0. Even I mean, you start from S3? Oh, well, you don't want to start from S3. Yeah, no, I mean, okay, that's a very good question. Thank you for asking it. If here I got the contact pair by just applying a ledge vector system, which is relatively non explicit. But in some cases, you can do very explicit things. For instance, if you have a vibration over S1, Okay, well, there is the Thurston with temporal construction. You can write down a contact structure on the on this thing. So my hope is that in concrete cases, it's possible to get some control on, on S0. And okay, I'm just gonna say it without writing it, but this theorem directly implies it gives another proof of a theorem by Lee and Roberts on on, on knots in S3. So they showed that. If you take a non-trivial knot in S3, by Gabay, we know that there is a, if you do the zero surgery on the knot, you get um, a taut foliation transverse to the image of the knot. So that is an amazing theorem from, I guess, the 80s, probably. Um, and Leah Roberts, more recently, they showed that actually you can do a small slope surgery on the knot to also get a taut foliation. Yeah. And that they do using the whole setup. So the hierarchies, rent surfaces, and et cetera, it's sort of tricky, it's very global. Uh, if you know that, and if you know Gabay's theorem, then, okay, the proof is essentially trivial. You start with the non-trivial knot, you do zero surgery, you get a taut foliation, you do a large slope surgery, and small zero slope followed by large slope is a small slope. And, and that gives you the little epsilon around zero on which you can get a taut foliation. Actually, this shows a bit more. It shows that the space of slopes, rapid slopes, <laughs> for which the corresponding slope surgery on the non-trivial knot gives you a top foliation, this thing is open. If you have one, you can go a little bit around it. Of course, now one would like to know the biggest interval of slope for which on a given knot you get a top foliation. And well, as I told you, I think one has to uh, find very explicit contact structures adapted to knots to be able to do something like that. Uh, or just finding an epsilon does not depend on the knot. That would already be something pretty nice to get. So, okay, maybe there is a way to uh, to use this technology to say something like that. I don't have any theorem in this direction yet, but uh, I have good hopes that maybe in the relatively near future, one can prove something using that. Okay, so maybe I just want to Before discussing the proof of the main theorem that is still 
over there. Uh, yeah, okay, actually, this is good. Uh, I just want to. Think about some conjectures or open questions. Um, so, I mean, first of all, in my, in my dictionary, you know, there is a ribless item corresponding to universally tight. This one, I don't know how to go back. But what I think is probably true, hopefully, is that if C minus C plus is a positive pair of tight contact structures, then there exists a gridless foundation on a pair. I sort of almost have a proof, but there are some technical difficulties. So I just take that as a conjecture, not a theorem. Um, but here I'm assuming that both of the contact structures are tight. And my guess is that you can find some foliation. So maybe the foliation that would be given by this theorem is not ribless, but there might be a way to modify it in a suitable way to make it ribless uh, by removing the rib components. Think about it, if you have a rib component with the holonomy on the exterior is trivial, then you can try to remove it by this. You can try to do something like that. Well, it's not. Is it the picture I want to draw? So we... No, sorry. It's not the picture I want to draw. Um, I want to draw something that's like that. That's better. If you have a maximal rib component with trivial meridional holonomy, it means that it looks like that rotated. And I do have the holonomy on the exterior. Otherwise, I could increase the solid torus in which I have a rib component. Then you can do this and get rid of it. Um, and that's actually an idea that is due to Colin Fermo. The difficulty, and I'm going to talk more about that when I sketch a proof of the main theorem, is that the foliations that I get are just C0 foliation. And so it's very hard to make sense of a holonomy in that case. I mean, you can make sense of holonomy, but there are some subtleties. So a given plane field can be tangent to several, a given continuous plane field can be tangent to several different foliations. Some of them might be ribless, and some of them might not. That's sort of like the the lack of unique interpretability. Um, and that's also why it's just a conjecture so far. And then maybe I have more like a, a question. Okay, so I mean, this is all very nice, but we still have this positivity assumption on the pair. That is something you cannot get rid of, right? I need them to be in this positive position, but okay. Can we remove it? So now let's say we have a new setup. I think this is the general and reasonable setup. I have C minus and C plus, both tight on M, and C minus and C plus are homotopic as plane fields. As oriented plane fields. And maybe plus conditions that I don't really know what they should be, then um, C minus C plus can be deformed or maybe modified. Well, can it be into the positive pair? So I don't know if they're positive, but at least they're in the correct homotopy classes. Is there a way to bring C minus into a positive position with respect to C plus? Or maybe there are some obstructions. What are the obstructions? Maybe they live in some Hegel homology. There is this contact invariant and et cetera that I don't really know. Um, 
Maybe there are further modifications that need to be performed. I don't really know, but I think that's a very interesting question. And you know, this question has a good answer. And is this conjecture is true? Then, from minimal contact data and very tractable, because I mean, those type of conjectures are classified on several manifolds, and uh, that would give a way to construct ribless foliation in three manifolds. And that is particularly interesting in view of the L-space conjecture, that conjectures that the existence of a tau foliation on the rational homogeneous sphere, irreducible, is equivalent to something in here at Fleur, namely it's not an L-space, or the or durability of the pilot. So maybe there is a way to fit also this kind of like picture uh, in the framework of the L-space conjecture, and actually, one direction of the L space conjecture, the existence of a top foliation implies that the free manifold is not an L space. It was proved by Oshvet and Zebel. They use Elias Rick Thurston. They approximate the foliation by contact structures and they say something about the contact invariance. Maybe there is a way to sort of try to reverse engineer this procedure and get some good foliation on the tree. That's sort of like the future directions that I think are particularly exciting. Okay, are there any questions? In the remaining time, I will try to sketch, very briefly sketch the proof of the main theorem. And proof essentially has two steps. First step is a bit annoying, a bit technical, but not too much. And the second one is really annoying. The second one, I'm not going to say much about it. Um, okay, so sketch. So, so let me just recall maybe the setup. We have C minus C plus a positive pair, and say you know one of them is tight. Actually, no, I don't. I'm not going to add the C yet. So now I just have a positive pair on my three minutes. The step one is to get some candidate for the tangent plane field. So I will get eta, a plane field, which should be Tn, tangent field to the collation of a construct. So to get this plane field, actually, the strategy is not completely new. Uh, so Colin Firmo. The strategy that I had adapted from Eliasberg Thurston and also Mitsumatsu. So the idea is to do the following. I can get a vector field X in the intersection of X minus and X plus. And this vector field is singular. X is zero exactly when X minus equals X plus. And this is what I call delta. Okay, but I can try to flow C plus and C minus along this vector field. So that's really the shared group before. C minus and the vector field is, is here, it's pointing towards you. Uh, I can flow them, and if you flow, C plus along this vector field, it will the, the slope of C plus will increase and the slope of C minus will decrease. So the hope is that in the limit, they limit to something that should be eta. Eta I left to make it green. So you should think of it as this is C plus, and you're gonna start flowing it. C plus T gets closer to this, this eta. Okay. So because you have, you know, you have increasing and decreasing functions, we can, we can the limits exist, right? So, uh, limits of minus t 
exist, but they might be different and they might not be continuous plane fields in the three manifold. Uh, but the, the theory is that this limit is actually well defined and gives a plane field. So Okay, so the theorem A, the first part, is as follows. For any such positive contact pair, so if I have no assumption, uh, the, the three plus one is T, they converge, C0 to eta, they have the same limit uniformly. And eta is a C0 plane field. And actually, the assignment that goes from C minus C plus to eta is continuous. So let's say here I put the smooth topology and here I put the C0 topology. So eta is the natural candidate. And B, now, We need some genericity. So for generic C minus C plus, um, eta is integrable, but there is a very big caveat, which is that it's only locally integrable. Locally integrable means that through every point, there is a little germ of surface, which is tangent to eta, but this germ might not be unique. And unfortunately, this plane field is only continuous. There is no hope for it to be better than continuous because there are examples of the Thurston where the corresponding plane field would not be continuous, would not be C1, would not be Lipschitz. Um, so we don't have unique integrability. So the, you know, the kind of like Frobenius integrability theorem does not hold if you don't have Lipschitz condition, or you know, if, you have, if you have an ODE with non Lipschitz coefficients, you might have a lot of different solutions passing through a given point. So that's the main difficulty. Uh, construction. And so I'm just going to say a few words about how to prove that. Um, to prove that, I don't show that the limits exist like that. I show that there exists a unique plane field eta that satisfies a checklist. The checklist is that it's a continuous plane field. It is sandwiched between C plus and C minus, and it contains X, and it's invariant under the flow of X. I can parameterize the candidate for eta in terms of C plus or C minus or forms, contact forms. I can write it as a linear combination depending on some functions. I write the integrability condition, you know, the linear derivative of eta along x should be zero that I can write. I get an ODE on the function that is parameterizing this angle. And then this ODE has some properties that implies that essentially there is no, there is a unique possibility. There is a unique initial value for this ODE to have a solution that exists and say bounded at all times. And once you have that, it's not too hard to prove continuity with respect to parameters. And it turns out that these two limits, well, they satisfy this condition, so they have to be equal and they have to match this theta. And here, I need generosity because, well, away from the zeros of X, I can do the following sort of easy thing. I take a transverse disk, I crash eta and the transverse disk, I pick a flow line tangent to eta in this transverse disk that exists. It's called cauchy Peano theorem. And I flow it along x. And that gives me a little patch of surface tangent to eta near the point. So local integrability away from delta, that's OK. It's like standard. However, along delta, then now I need to control what delta is. So for a generic C plus C minus, delta is a link, an embedded link. And I can also make X generic near this singular set. And there are three types of singularities happening. They are, they are normally hyperbolic branches, normally elliptic branches, and sometimes the two branches crash into each other to give some quadratic type of singularity. But those are the three types of singularities that can rise. And OK, you can look very closely and construct by hand patches of surfaces to get local integrity. What is really important here is not only that it's locally integral, but moreover, you, you really have to understand the tangent surfaces passing through the points of delta very well. Okay, so that's step 
one, which is the sort of not too hard step. And firstly, I don't have much time to talk about step two. Uh, and step two is about dealing with the locally. And step two is about adapting the strategy that is due to Rago and Ivanov. So they have a similar setting. They have a plane field eta. They have the vector field X, such that eta is invariant along X. But in their case, um, X has no singularities and no closed orbits. In my case, I have singularities and closed orbits, a priori, I don't know. And in particular, if, you, if they are singularities and closed orbit, we could have a tangent disk. So immersed disk, so tangent to eta is so that the boundary of D2 is tangent to X. These disks are really bad in this construction. But such a disk implies that both of the contact structures are over-twisted. I phrase it for immersed, but there is a way to modify it to make it embedded. And it's not too hard to see that the boundary of this disk would be a Legendrian with vanishing thurston benkut number, which is not possible for tight contact structures. Or if they are transverse, well, there is no singularities and this does not exist. Yeah. Essentially, put any assumption that guarantees that these disks don't exist for the sort of dynamical system mix. Yeah. So for step two, I'm really just looking at this then sort of a, a polarized vector field. A vector field, and that plays the role of the polarization. I want to find some foliation tangent to the polarization. And, and here you can just forget about contact structures. Put any condition on the contact structures that ensures that these disks don't exist. And so maybe I'm just gonna say a few more words about the proof and stuff. They, the strategy does not give a foliation immediately. It gives a branching foliation. Tangent to era. So this branching foliation is a collection of maximal immersed surfaces, just like a foliation. They cover M, but they're allowed to touch. They're allowed to touch, but they're not allowed to topologically cross. So when they meet, they, they look at that. They might coincide, and they might coincide in a very large region of the manifold, but when they separate, they separate in the same way with respect to the core orientation. Okay. And then, well, Bragg and Ivanov, they have a way to unbranch or separate the leaves at the expense of modifying the plane field of time a little bit. So modify in a to make it tangent to foliation. So maybe if I if I summarize the theorem B is that for and maybe I need even more genericity assumptions generic sigmas plus eta is tangent to a branching foliation. So every time I make C minus C plus generic, I modify the eta a little bit, but it's still sort of close to the original one. So that's why I said you can think of eta as being sandwiched, being C plus and C minus. It's not true. C0 close to that. Uh, but in particular, that gives you some control on what the tangent plane field to the foliation should be. And yeah, theory B is the hard part because to construct such a branching foliation, rather than even of having inductive construction, they don't construct leaves on, on one go, they construct pieces of leaves, they try to extend them as much as they can until they cannot, so they have boundaries. And every time they construct leaves, they have to uh, remember the order on the leaves because if I just look at this portion, I don't know if red is above 
a bit of blue, but I have to remember of an order that sort of matches the geometric order. And so it's very painful because you have to construct the surfaces, you have to construct the orders, and you have to extend them until you get uh, the branching formation that you want. And then separating the leaves is uh, not too complicated. And I think I'll just appear. Thank you. Two quick questions. Mm -hmm. So, can you remind me again strongly tight? Yeah, so strongly tight. Um, it means that there exists omega which is closed to form, and omega is positive on C plus and C minus. Or if you prefer, for every point in M, there exists a loop gamma passing through. through P and gamma is strengthened to C plus and C minus. Um, or maybe there is Z, a volume preserving vector field for some volume form, which is positive with reverse to C plus C minus. All, all these conditions make sense for foliations as well, and they all mean totness. Is that closed form on a neighborhood of the three manifold? Sorry? That closed through form. On the three manifold. On the three manifold. Yes. Close to form positive in the loops, yeah. Essentially, any definition of thought that does not include the word leaf <laughs> makes sense for plain fields. And here I'm just putting this condition on both of them. But it's sort of a hard hoc condition that is not necessarily very you know, easy to manipulate. I think ribless makes more sense in this context. And a ribless foliation and atroidal the manifold for instance, in a hyperbolic free manifold, is automatically taught. So I think this whole business is maybe a bit better at rigorous things. Um, the problem is that you know, these conditions here strongly tied or taught are open in the C0 topology for plane fields. But rigorous, I don't really know how to make sense of that for C0 affiliations in terms of the plane field. And again, the problem is that a given continuous plane field might be tangent to a lot of very different affiliations with different holonomies and different behaviors and et cetera. That's why in the conjecture that I erased, I'm just saying that there should be one rigorous foliation, but you know, I, I need to go through this whole branching foliation business and select the good one. And so uh, my, my guess is that to prove the conjecture, I have to you know, understand the sort of like maximal tori, solid tori tangent to the, to the plane field. And for those, I know that the holonomy on the outside, the, Holonomy, the correct, I don't know really what the correct version of holonomy, but there is some kind of holonomy behavior that is trivial on the outside. And then I have to find a good branching foliation that matches that and then extend it. But because I don't have any unique integrability, I really have to do things by hand and it's pretty complicated. I should say that a lot of these results that I presented were uh, already, they already appeared in the work of Cola and Firmo, but they always assume that the plane field is uniquely integrable. Or maybe they have one or two results where they get unique integrability because of the assumptions that they have, but otherwise they always have to assume unique integrability. And so the, the, the main difficulty in this whole work is to go beyond unique integrability and do this branching foliation business to still get a foliation uh, out of that. Are there any results uh, matching conduct structures and foliations in higher dimensions? That's an excellent question. Uh, I do not know. Uh, and so I think all it's, statements this is very 3D, yeah. Um, I had a conversation with Yasha at some point, and uh, I think he mentioned some potential ideas, but I do not really understand. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It, it seems that, yeah, it's. I mean, the whole procedure of like flowing them, flowing the contact structures to get the tangent point and stuff, that really uses the miracle that, you know, two plus one, two plus one equals three or something like yeah. that. Uh, yeah, and a lot of this does make yeah. sense. In that. Yeah. So yeah, so I don't really know what the correct question should be, for instance. Um, but yeah, I think that's also a very interesting direction. Um, I'm crucial in the branching foliation business, I'm also crucially using that one plus one plus one equals three. So you can you have, you have the, the transverse direction and then you can reduce it to the surface direction and on the surfaces you have the vector field x 
that reduces the dimension as well. So that is sort of like a crucial thing that I can sort of reduce to studying sometimes one dimensional phenomena and not higher dimensional them. One last question. So in, in your kind of formulation, you didn't much emphasis on, on like context structure being even synthetically feelable, mm -hmm. like Elias Victor's and construct. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, so this implies symplectically symplectically feelable. If you have strongly typed, I mean, you don't need to know that the pair comes from the foliation. As long as you have this omega, you can construct a symplectic structure on, you know, actually, I can, I can just write it as omega plus d t alpha, where alpha defines the foliation. Maybe I want to put some epsilon somewhere, I don't remember, but if you do that, then that gives you a symplectic structure, and it's uh, on the boundary that gives you a weak filling. So that gives you a weak symplectic filling of x plus and c minus. And, but if you have hypertots, only you get a usual filling. Well, maybe C2, because Jonathan's usual is for C2 foliations, because he has to use this uh, leaf wise, run in motion, and all these crazy, amazing things. And so he needs some regularity. Um, but, but yeah, some of these conditions, they automatically give you some type of sympathetic filling on M cross interval or M cross R, or C plus and C minus. I mean, in terms of using your result to, let's say, attack past based on picture, mm -hmm. so the, the result you mentioned of Kershaw and Zabo, yeah. was it was crucial that with the tau foliation they, they 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 knew that they could produce a yes a, a generator, right? Like, yes. and the feasibility was important there. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely, yeah, yeah, they they use that from the tau foliation. You get the contact structures, and they are some weakly simply fillable, and that implies something on the contact environment. Yeah. Um, is yeah, no, I think you will keep track of it, or maybe, I mean, maybe, I, yeah, I mean, is there a difference? Well, I think I would, I mean, my, I wouldn't say my approach, because I mean, it's still just like very tiny ideas, but that would be to at least start from, you know, negative and positive tight contact structures and see what, in, in the same homotopy class, and see what are the assumptions, natural assumptions to make them positive. And one thing you can do is, you know, the, this type of result here in, in, in step one, you know, having the vector field and flowing the vector and stuff, you can still do that if the pair is not positive. It's just that delta has two components, a delta positive, where the two contact structures touch positively just like that, and they're negative. And the problem is that all the constructions, you know, the, the foliation constructed from eta, uh, it does not extend to delta minus. But if there is a way to, you know, get rid of this delta minus, then maybe, you know, uh, so if the two contact structures are homotopic as plane fields, the data minus is a null homologous knot. And okay, null homologous knot in three manifolds that, uh, you know, uh, a paradise for 3D topologists, they have a lot of variance and et cetera. And so, you know, maybe one can do something more in the, in the vein of uh, co convex surfaces by, well, it's a null homologous thing, it bounds some, some surface and, can we make the surface embedded in convex or with some properties? And can we, you know, try to modify C minus C plus to get rid of it? And what are the obstructions along the way? I think there is a lot of things to try that are fairly elementary. Um, this whole story is sort of elementary in the sense that I don't and almost never use big machinery. Uh, this and maybe the, the, in the most complicated step of of Ivanov, really the most complicated result. And that is like the stable and stable manifold theorem in pocket hemp and Dixon. Those are like, and all the rest is sort of elementary and can be done by hand, which does not mean that it's easy, unfortunately, but uh, so, but, but I think there are lots of relatively, uh, you know, not too hard things to try to extend this theory and, you know, understanding how two complex structures can interact to the And I think that, you know, if, Anyone can say anything meaningful about that, then that should result in a theory of foliation. So, so that's sort of my hope. Okay, let's thank Thomas again.